Today, though, we honor Professor Goldstein not for these significant professional accomplishments, but for introducing those of us who had not read his previous books to Michael Seeley. I suspect that I'm not, and Carol alluded to this, I'm probably not the only person in the room for whom, if we were playing a word association game, copyright law and legal thriller would, would, would not show up together. Uh, but uh, here we are. Paul takes his readers on a fascinating excursion through Castro's Havana that features a lawyer hero who, while not exactly Atticus Finch, uh, fights through his own demons for a good cause. And paraphrasing the charge of the Harper Lee Prize shows the power that lawyers have to effect social change. It's my great pleasure to present the 2013 Harper Lee Prize for Legal Fiction to Paul Goldstein. Thank you very much. Uh, Bill, thank you. I'm deeply grateful uh, to the University of Alabama School of Law, to the American Bar Association Journal, Bill, Alan, uh, for this, this award. Grateful to the selection committee that took time from busy schedules to read a number of books that perhaps ordinarily they would not have open the pages to otherwise. And uh, to Ms. Nell Harper Lee uh, for agreeing to lend her name uh, to this, this prize, not a trivial thing to do. My personal celebration after learning uh, that I won, uh, the Havana Requiem won the Harper Lee Prize was to reread To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, it had been some years uh, since I had uh, read it last. I am one of those lawyers who was not in that, not going to be in that crowded, <laughs> that crowded room. And it was just absolutely a joy and nostalgic to be sure to be captivated once again by the magic of those pages, a, an absolutely enduring uh, and very special magic. Most writers of fiction, I believe, aspire to cast a spell in much the way Harper Lee does in To Kill a Mockingbird. Very few manage to do that, and even they rarely. Magic of the sort that we find in To Kill a Mockingbird is not easily reverse engineered, if it can be reverse engineered at all. Is it the translucence of the language? Is it the very special sense of place that's created around Maycomb, Alabama? Is it Scout Finch's canny voice or Atticus Finch's uncanny integrity? You know, there's all of that to the mystery and drama and magic of To Killing a Mockingbird, but that just scratches the surface. There is so much more, and as I say, that kind of magic cannot be reverse engineered. The spell cast by Harper Lee's book is as enduring as it is ineffable. Even the Alabama contingent here, and I really feel, I think Californians are seriously outnumbered, will be pleased to hear that in the weeks following uh, the announcement of the prize in, in the local press around uh, Palo Alto and Stanford, any number of colleagues, friends, complete strangers would come to me on the street. They had instantly engaged with the meaning of a prize that had the name Harper Lee attached to it. On a personal, more personal uh, note, my mom, uh, was a great reader of good fiction. Uh, in one of my last conversations with her, she died last month uh, at age 100. One of my last conversations with her, and her, she had been failing, her mind had been failing for, for some time. I said, Mom, you know, the, the book, Havana Requiem, uh, has won a, a prize called the Harper Lee Prize for Legal Fiction. She instantly engaged 
and said, Harper Lee, to kill a mockingbird? Why, that's wonderful, Paul. So for allowing my modest effort to brush up against the very special magic of To Kill a Mockingbird, I am deeply indebted to, to Harper Lee, as well as to the committee uh, and to the ABA and to the University of Alabama School of Law. Thank you very much.